Well, this topic might seem a bit gross, but this is an important topic for our personal health and protecting others. Blood, we know what that is. But what else are common bodily fluids? How can we protect ourselves and others from being infected? Let's see. At work, we tend to use the formal words, but many people are not familiar with these words. Here are some common bodily fluids you might come across and the common names. Try to practice using the formal words when you're at work. Blood, sweat, saliva, mucus or phlegm, urine, feces, vomit. A person might be sick or injured and we need to assist. All officers should know there is a possibility of contracting a serious or fatal infection from blood or bodily fluids. When we are involved with a person who might be sick or injured, or there is a spill of bodily fluid, then security officers are expected to first of all give help or first aid while protecting your own health. Then prevent and protect others also from contacting the fluids. And of course, you'll follow the instructions of medical workers who are also assisting. Each site has first aid kits, sharps kits and personal protective equipment. Usually this is stored in the control room or some other designated areas. Officers have a first aid certificate and are expected to know the locations of this equipment and how to use it correctly. When working in an area that is contaminated by blood or bodily fluids, you must always wear the correct PPE the personal protective equipment to minimise any direct contact. If you need to remove a syringe or needle stick, first take a sharps kit to the location. Use the PPE and tongs to pick it up. Put the syringe or needle stick directly into the sharps container. Return the sharps kit and tools to the correct location and wash your hands. Remember, it's important to avoid direct contact with blood or other bodily fluids. And contact cleaning staff to help with any cleanup. But of course, make sure they enter the area only after clearance from your supervisor. Correctly dispose or thoroughly wash contaminated items. Wash your exposed bodily parts thoroughly with soap and water. It may be more than just your hands. Then return all first aid and sharps kits to their correct location. If you have directly touched blood or bodily fluids, then you should tell your supervisor immediately and fill in an incident report. You may have to get immediate medical advice. Sometimes you'll need to assist with a crime scene. If there is an incident involving a crime, you must first provide first aid and support to any victims or others in need, contact emergency personnel and the control room, and stop other people from accessing the area, that is, those who are not assisting. Remember to follow the correct procedures at a crime scene. Do not touch things that may have been left by an offender. Ask witnesses to stay near the scene to help with investigations, but insist that they do not discuss the matter with each other. Remember, it is important to preserve the crime scene as much as possible. And of course, in time, reports will need to be made and all relevant documents attached. So, what do you need to do? Protect the health and safety of yourself and others. Use the proper PPE and the first aid and sharps kits. And follow the correct procedures, especially when assisting with a crime scene. That's it for this session. So don't forget to complete the short test below and thanks for joining us. One last thing, we'd love to hear your comments. So send us an email to remember at learningsphere.com.au with your thoughts.